Hello guys and welcome to this week's tutorial on ProRPA.com. Well, apologies first of all for um, not being able to connect with you guys for a while now. Um, things have been really, really hectic at my end, but that's no excuse, so I really apologize. Uh, from this week onwards, we'll be starting off with the Automation Anywhere tutorial. So, uh, just to give a background, we have three major RPA vendors out in the market, right? We have Blue Prism, we have UiPath, and we have Automation Anywhere. So, I've already provided the content for Blue Prism and for UiPath. If you guys haven't checked out their, you know, uh, the content related to the development, how the bots are built in there, what are the different functionalities, just to kind of hit the ground up and running for you guys, then please do check that out at ProRPA.com. Um, they are pretty nicely written in, in like a very good chronological sequence, so you should be able to follow them one after the other. Right? All right. So this brings us to that last RPA major technologies. Of course, there are other small vendors out there as well. Like, you know, we have Kofax. Um, there's one specific tool within SAP called WinShuttle, that's there too. Um, but, but, um, this Automation Anywhere and, uh, along with the other major vendors like Blue Prism and UiPath, they are pretty much like technology or platform independent, right? So you can automate a lot of, like a myriad of applications just by using these, these small bots or as you can call them as digital users. Right. So um, to start it off, uh, the first thing that people do for any software application, for any enterprise application whatsoever is, guess it, I'm sure you must have guessed it, it's to install it, to set it up, to configure it, right, so that you can actually get started. So for that, we have this link called automationanywhere.com slash LP RP editions comparison. Um, I have provided that link in the blog article, the link for which is in the description for this video as well. So if you um, don't want to write it down by yourself, then just check that out, just copy and just paste it in a browser, right? And it will redirect, it, redirect you to a page like this. And in here we have different versions of software, right? So you can see this one, like the enterprise version is specifically designed for the enterprises. You can have a free trial, but that's gonna be for a limited number of time, right? Uh, which is for 30 days. Same is the case uh, for the Enterprise uh, A 2019 version. That's like between mid to large organizations. That's what the uh, version is more catered to. This one also um, is like for a limited number of time. So you might not wanna go there. The last one, which is called the Community Edition, and I think that's the same verbiage that they have used as UiPath. Um, this is tailored specifically for developer. It's for people like us who want to, you know, just try it out in the market, just wanna see how the, 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 the functionality is, how it works, just to kind of get the look and feel of the software so that, you know, you can be proficient enough to, I don't know, get a job, get a project by yourself, lead it, I mean, the, the possibilities are endless here, right? So once you click on get community edition, that's what I recommend, you'll be kind of scrolled down automatically and you have to provide your details, right? Your first name, last name, email address, your country you belong to, phone number and company. Now in there, before you request, you have to provide your um, details, like, you know, uh, all these stuff. And then you have to check box this there, at the least this one that you have read and accept the uh, end user, you know, terms and conditions. And um, if you want to have any marketing emails, you can check this. If you don't, I mean, don't. Then when you click on get community edition, um, you will get um, uh, like a link where you will have your actual ID and password, right? So, and it's gonna also have a URL. I've pasted a screenshot. I don't wanna put that up right here because um, like, you know, it will have the actual username and the password as well. But, um, so I cannot show it to you right away, but uh, a screenshot for the same has been posted in the blog article. So if you haven't checked that out, please do. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you guys remember from the other articles that um, the way I usually uh, uh, 
proclaim to um, to go through is to first read the blog article and then go through the video tutorial. And the reason is with a, with a, when you go through a blog article, you actually tend to get you know kind of um, a, a basic understanding, a foundational level understanding of the topic that we'll be covering for a week. And then through the video, you can actually see those moving pieces together and, and it kind of makes the complete sense, right? That's just my recommendation, totally up to you guys. Uh, how you would want to follow what is your preferred way of learning but yeah we have both these options out in the market here right so once you um, go to that specific user url that uh, is provided in that email just log in with your user id and your password which is also part of that email probably even change that password right away and you will be redirected to control room so this control room is where you have all you know like like in, in UiPath, we have something called, um, you know, the orchestrator, which is like a cloud-based solution where you schedule bots and, you know, kind of monitor it. It's precisely the same thing. In Blue Prism, we have the same terminology called control room. So I think, you know, having uh, an, a kind of experience on these different fields and then bringing them together can actually give you a much broader knowledge of RPA as a subject matter, right? All right, so in here, at least for this week, we will go through each of these things, uh, you know, subsequently as we move into different um, like weeks and as we progress through the course. But at a high level, this is the dashboard, which is going to give you a very high level overview of how your bots are performing, um, how many bots you have, just like the usual metrics you have. Right. And then you can always like kind of just just traverse or look, go through it and you'll see you know, different type of um, like information kind of metadata that, that it will present to you just to have information quickly and readily available, right? Number of tasks it has run, average time it has spent and all that stuff. Then we have some activities. Um, activities include like if there are some activities which are in progress at the moment or something historically which has been finished, like um, the execution and stuff. So you can see some of those these red ones, I abruptly terminated those. There are some which actually went through complete end to end, no issues. So all that information is also logged. Now, whenever we talk about logs and whenever we talk about historical activities, you can imagine, imagine what the, uh, what it must be talking about. Right? No? Okay. So it usually talks about the audit logs, right? Just to have a good understanding of what system actually did at specific intervals of time. Right. And it is very it is like a compliance issue if you don't have it. So every software needs to have these sort of logs which can be looked upon by internal or external auditors and see that bot was performing right or not. Or whether there was some, you know, um, <laughs> monkey, there was no monkey business, as, as we call it. Right. There is nothing um, that was non-compliant that was like, let's say, some restricted access that was provided. So that didn't happen just to kind of corroborate to that statement. All right, next is the bots. Bots, as the name itself suggests, is the repository of all the bots that you have created so far, right? We're gonna create bots and stuff, but these are the bots that are available to your control room, right? So if you can recall it from the uh, uh, Blue Prism, all the published bots actually go in the control room, right? So all those bots usually, which are, um, which have like kind of finished the development is when we usually have these bots in here, right? And here's the credentials like to manage your credentials so that, you know, uh, you have a centralized repository where you can pass on these information to, uh, to any bot running on a local system without kind of interfering in any of the other uh, uh, like process level access or, or just, just make sure that the work is going on smoothly. Right. There are some packages as well, which we'll um, talk later. The next is my devices. So my devices is like um, we have shown that in the blog article as well. My devices is where we have a complete like set of all those local machines that are configured correctly in your control room. So by that, what I mean is imagine you have to have different bots running on different machines. So all those machines, right, would be in, in let's say automation anywhere's terminology be called as devices and these devices are configured here. So for that, 
what you usually do is you add a lo local bot agent. When you click on this, it will download about 186 MB of uh, Automation Anywhere bot agent file on your local system. And once it downloads, just simply install it, right? You know, like you install any software application by clicking next, 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 accepting the user agreement and stuff. So yeah, that's kind of the same stuff that you got to do. It's actually very simple, very um, intuitive, I would say, but very fast as well. So once you um, install it, then uh, then your control room automatically detects it and can, um, you know, kind of uh, connect to your local machine. Now, the best part is like in, in other RPA tools, usually you have to kind of, you know, like add some details, like, you know, your machine name, your this ID, that ID, some usernames, some passwords, blah, blah, blah. The best part about this agent thing is that, that all this configuration is kind of created dynamically and all you have to do is just download and install it. So it's, it's a part of like, like every control room would have its own specific some specifications, let's say, and all those specifications would be automatically dynamically configured in this bot agent file, which we download and then we install, right? So it all kind of happens in the back end. You don't have to have that overhead of, you know, configurations and setting up the right parameters and stuff. So that's really, really nice. So once you do that, the next step it asks for is to enable a Chrome extension. So with that Chrome extension, since I'm using a Chrome machine, um, it's going to help to, um, to, you know, like we have a Chrome extension for UiPath also to, to kind of interact with the elements of, of a specific browser, right? So this Chrome extension is going to provide you those additional functionalities and would make Chrome more compatible with the Automation Anywhere bot capabilities. Right, so it's better. I would recommend to go for it and just just uh, get it done. Now, if you cannot find it, just like for my system, for this system of mine, it actually automatically just get into. Uh, it just automatically gave me the option to download and install the automation anywhere uh, plugin, right, in the Chrome itself, which is right here. But if you don't have it, just go to your settings, go to more tools, go to extensions, and in that extensions. Just open your Chrome web store. Once you open this, all you got to do is just search. It's like, you know, uh, like for iPhone or for Android, you have your Play Store. So Chrome also has its Play Store. Just search for automation anywhere. You'll see add to Chrome like this option, right? Just add it. And uh, if it asks for installation, install it. Make sure it's enabled. If you click here, you don't have to remove it or anything. I was just showcasing it to you. And that's it. So this is the one, right? Which has already been added successfully on my system. So uh, once you enable the Chrome, then the last step is connect to the computer and that's it. It actually connects to your computer. And then now, since this configuration, this connection has been established, now anything that you want to run on your local machine can be kind of controlled and monitored anywhere, right? All you have to do is have to have your uh, this control room's ID password and of course the URL too and that's it. That's it, you're all set, right? Fairly simple, fairly intuitive and it's, it's, it's fun. It's actually pretty f um, fun, I would say. It's, it's an interesting learning experience. So um, I think that is it for this week. Um, we're gonna go m into more and more details as we progress through different articles, through different, you know, video tutorials. So please do stay tuned. Um, please do shower your love, your blessings and your feedback on uh, the Pro RPA uh, website, which is www.prorpa.com and also on your, uh, my YouTube channel, uh, which, you know, is where the, this video is going to reside too. Please do share, do provide your likes, comments, um, and uh, subscribe, uh, you know, by pressing that bell icon, as everybody says. <laughs> and uh, also, if you would like, please do like my uh, Facebook page called Pro RPA 2, uh, like no numeric 2, like just Pro RPA, Pro hyphen RPA. So please do like that as well. And um, thank you very much. Looking forward to the next week and talking to you guys more. Bye bye.